Well, hello, everybody. This is episode 521 of the Stable Scoop Show on the Horse Radio Network's Equestrian Roundtable Show. Our sponsor this episode is Purina Omega Match. I am Glenn Geek, founder of the Horse Radio Network and host of Horses in the Morning, the longest-running daily horse podcast in the world. And I want to make sure that you know that if you don't hear or see all of the show tonight you can catch it on the stable scoop podcast feed tomorrow just look up stable scoop in your podcast player and you can listen to the whole thing i'm your host and moderator and i'm sure i'll have some opinions but most of this tonight is about the panelists they're going to lead the way and they're going to they actually chose the questions i let them choose the topics they want to talk about and tonight we have a group from the american horse publications that's the group of journalists uh, in the horse world in the equine world uh, we're all different kinds of journalists some writing and some talking and uh, uh, just a little bit of everything photographers AHP is made up of a lot of different uh, groups and we have three of my friends on tonight who are going to join us and talk about some very interesting topics that I think you're going to enjoy if you are here and you can type in the comments tell me your name and where you're from all the panelists will see the comments as well so definitely as the show goes on tonight feel free to comment let us know how you feel about a particular topic uh, and we would love to hear from you so uh, if you can type in the comments that would be great if there's a problem with any of the sound or anything going on tonight if you can hear somebody let us know in the comments as well and i'll keep an eye on that before we go too much for further i needed to mention that we are coming up almost a month away from the HRN Roadshow. Right now, if you go to horseradionetwork.com and click on the banner at the top of the page for the Roadshow, you're going to see where we have the meetups. Uh, most of the meetups are planned. We're going to have Facebook uh, events for most of them as we go along here. We're finalizing some of the details of some of the meetups. I think there's a total of a dozen meetups uh, in multiple states, so you can check out where we're going to be on the East Coast. If you're around, we would love to see you. I will say for the Jamie Jennings fans out there, she will be joining us in Lexington, Kentucky for the weekend, and we're going to have a meetup there. I think it's August the 7th. We're going to meet up at the Kentucky Horse Park. So we have a trail riding meetup. We have a concert. We have all kinds of things planned. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Save the dates. And as we get more details, we'll keep releasing them here. But Jennifer and I go on the road on July the 31st, a total of 3,300 miles. We're traveling across the East Coast. And uh, hopefully we survive and all goes well. We're not driving through New Jersey, so we should make it safely. And I only say that for Heather's benefit tonight. Hi, Hazel from Central Iowa. Good to have you here tonight. Appreciate you stopping by. And one other thing, and then we're going to meet our panelists straight away, but I have to mention this because there's still time. Our Horse Lovers Cruise in 2022, we're still taking reservations and tickets for that. If you go to horseloverscruise.com, you'll find all the details. We have 50 people signed up, and it looks like we're cruising again. It looks like the cruises have started out of Florida again, so hopefully we'll be able to go. So definitely go sign up. We have a blast. This is not educational in any way, shape, or form. We eat, we drink, and we have fun. That's what we do on these cruises. We're going to be on the second largest cruise ship in the world, and we are going for seven nights this time. This will be the longest cruise we've ever done, and I think everybody's looking forward to it at this point, getting out of the house. And, and getting on a boat. So that's, uh, that's the details of some of the things we got coming up right now on the Horse Radio Network. But for, let's meet our panelists tonight who are then going to bring us the topics of the night. And we do have Jersey Girl. We have Heather Wallace on here with us. Hi, Heather. Hi, Glenn. Thanks for having me. Now, you're with the Timid Rider. Tell us what Timid Rider is. So the Timid Rider is a personal blog about returning to horses as an adult and all the overthinking and fear that comes with it as an adult, as someone who doesn't bounce like she used to. And as a mom, I can't really, you know, risk too much getting hurt. But um, yeah, it's, it's following my personal journey with my horses and um, really struggling with not being perfect and trying to be the best I can for them. And having a little fear and doing it anyway. You just described 99% of the people that are going to listen to this. So. There are a lot of us. <laughs> um, you wrote a couple books too, Confessions of a Timid Rider and Girl Forward, right? Correct, yes. And what's Girl Forward about? Girl Forward is how is following my journey to Mongolia, how I ended up with an endurance horse race out there. Um, as someone who is a timid rider, a lot of people wonder. So you I did the, the story. You did the Mongolian Derby, didn't you? 
I didn't actually. It was. Uh, it's called the Gobi Desert Cup. It's an endurance. Oh, we race. had you on talking about that. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So I ended up going twice, but the book is about my first ever journey going as a timid person without ever knowing the people there, knowing the language, knowing the culture, or anything about it. I dropped everything and took the opportunity. So that's so a timid story. girl goes rides crazy Mongolian ponies. <laughs> yep, that about sums it up. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're here tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And uh, we have Stephanie joining us as well. She's from Dressage today. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Heather. It's good Ste to see you. Stephanie also ho used to host a show on the Horse Radio Network. I did. Uh, about Arabians. But now you're hosting your own show over on Dressage today about Dressage, right? That is correct. Um, yeah, we just we just started, or I just started. I've only done like three or four episodes, I guess, so far. But I like I like it. It's fun. And w w what's it called? Where do people find it? Oh well, it's you know the Dressage Today podcast. There it's you a, go. It, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious. You can find it on uh, wherever you find your podcasts. But it's myself and and uh, my co-host is Aviva Nebeski, who is um, based in Maryland. She's a trainer and. A graduate of the L program. So we just get to, I've known her, I've clinicked with her, she's judged me and, you know, we just get together and we just kind of chat and talk and, you know. All right, very stuff. good. <laughs> good, cool, very good. And of course, dressage today, we all know what that is. We've, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. <laughs> all right, next up, uh, we have, we, we're going to go to Katie Navarra. Let me bring Katie on here. Hi, Katie. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Heather and Stephanie. Now, Katie, you're you do something that's a little bit different in the media world for for the horse world. Tell us about it. Yes, yeah, so um, I am my own boss. I'm a freelance writer. Started my career in the horse industry, writing for many of the the magazines that you see in the newsstand every day, um, the breed publications, the general horse care and training, um, and also work with corporations who put out all the wonderful content that you read about your horse care and how to find the best products and, and keep your horses healthy and happy. Um, and in the last year, I've been adding some new services to my business, which I'm really excited about, and that is um, life and leadership coaching. And um, I'll be launching some of those services in partnership with um, horses since they um, are really good at showing us that what happens in the arena is what happens in the rest of life. And they can help us really identify where we're getting stuck and um, see some new opportunities for how we can move forward. Hmm. And it doesn't matter, old guys like me can do that too? Anyone can do it. Um, okay. Horse people, non-horse people, um, you know, come, come with the experience level that you have. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And we're going to learn a little bit more about what you guys do later on, but let's get right to the first question. And Heather, I'm going to yours first because I thought this was interesting. It's a topic that's never been brought up here. Explain, you wanted to talk about toxic positivity. So tell us about that. What is it? What is the... What is toxic positivity? Yeah, what is it and why, why, the, why the topic? So it's the belief that no matter how difficult a situation is, that people should always maintain a positive mindset. It should be like the good vibes only approach to life. And it doesn't recognize any of the opposite, like any of those downtimes, any of those times where people struggle. And so the reason I wanted to bring it up is because I had a personal experience with this. And it's really difficult for a lot of nervous writers or those who struggle with overthinking to just let it go and just focus on the positive. Sometimes it's impossible to do. Um, and then they feel worse because of it, because all these other people are telling them what they should do and they're not really kind of getting it. So I wanted to bring this up because I wanted to find, really open the conversation, like how can we make it less of a red flag to talk about our feelings or our fears without the stigma of us not being good riders or being scared all the time when that's not really the case? You know, this applies to more than just riding, right? It applies to almost anything. When I was really sick last year, I actually found it annoying. Because people say, oh, you'll get through this. You know, they're trying to be helpful, right? But at that point, it's hard, you know, and it, you're not thinking that way. And then you you kind of feel like, mm, you know, I should be feeling more positive, but I'm really not. You know, so, you and know, it's, it's a cyclical effect where you're feeling yep. ter more terrible about yourself because you have those feelings in the first place. 
I belong to a cancer group for men in, on Facebook, and in there, it's the exact opposite. You say exactly what you're feeling, and they don't patron. It's almost patronizing at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't. They they just say, "Yeah, this is tough, and it's going to suck," you know, because sometimes it just sucks, you know, and you got to get through the suck to get to the good, the other side. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I think there's a balance there, though, right, Stephanie? What do you think? Yeah, well, I think it's um, definitely and. You know, I try to, I personally try to be the glasses half full person and I try to see the good in situations and stuff like that. But like, like all you guys, every now and then I'm just, you know, life kicks you in the gut, usually more than once at a time. Cause you know, you can't go through just one hard thing. You have to go through 15. Um, so yeah, this, this, this topic goes way beyond just horses and everything, but yeah. So it's. And I, I allow myself, you know, to have a pity party every now and then and to, you know, like lay on the couch and woe is me. But um, then like the next day or whatever, I get my butt back up and go do what I need to do. And, you know, I might not be happy about it, but, you know, so I think, yeah, it's so fine to, it's absolutely fine to go, you know what, this really stinks. Um, but then I'm just the kind of person that it might slow me down and that, you know, but I'll dust myself off again and keep on going, you know, <laughs> so, and that's kind of the way it is with riding too, you know, cause we get, we get fucked off or whatever and you dust yourself off and you nurse your wounds and then you go, you get back on. <laughs> so it's kind of, and it kind of goes cyclically. <laughs> Does any of your uh, woe is me time involve moose tracks I- ice cream for about a half a gallon? Like <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, I try really <laughs> hard not to. I try really hard not to. But yeah, I will occasionally stress eat, you know, or, or have a very large glass of wine. Um, my friends will. St- my friends used to say um, there's the, there's a glass of wine and then there's a Stephanie size glass of wine. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> but I try to I try to moderate that. No, usually it's just like laying on the couch watching some stupid, you know, mindless television, you know, that I can just check out for a while. We're, we're hanging out with Stephanie at the HP conference this year. Katie, what about you? Um, you know, I think it's a really interesting topic to bring up. Um, you know, on the horse side of things, it is something that I'm struggling with a little bit myself. Um, decided to take a little bit of a step back from showing this year. Um, and you know, always hear from other people, oh, you gotta be positive. You gotta think about what, how far you've come in this and that. And when it just doesn't feel like it's the right thing to do, um, you know, it's really hard to trust your, your gut. Um, and this is actually something that I talk a lot about with uh, clients that I work with is, um, you know, we can't control what other people say or what other people expect for us. And so, yes, when they expect us to be the glass is always three quarters full or overflowing, um, we still have the power to decide how that's going to impact us. Um, And I think it's really timely that this came up because coincidentally, I'm reading the book Radical Candor now, right now. And in it, the author talked about two types of people at work, people who are the superstars and people who are the rock stars. And one group is your, your group of employees who never wants to be promoted. They love what they're doing. They're good at what they do and they're very happy. And the other group is the one that's always looking for that next promotion, next promotion. And I, it really got me thinking back to my career when I worked in corporate settings, really struggling with not understanding why people didn't want to move forward, didn't want to advance. Um, and so I think it sort of ties into this whole topic of positivity and thinking that people should have different aspirations or feel a different way. Um, so it's been really um, interesting to take a step back and and think about that through this book that I'm reading, this conversation that we're having. and realize that we just need to be, you know, a little bit more supportive of everybody. I think that's really interesting because I, I, I completely agree with you, Katie, because I think the big problem we have is we always want to put people in the same box as we are when life isn't always like that, right? I think the biggest thing to ask is, well, what do you want? Because what I want is maybe not what you want and what Stephanie wants and what Glenn wants. So I think that's a really good point. Stephanie, you were... Yeah, I was I was just gonna say that's I, I was gonna agree with Katie and and you know kind of with with the horse thing sometimes I see people who struggle with um, 
wondering why other people don't want to compete. Well, why don't you want to show? You have such a nice horse. You're such a nice rider or, or whatever. Why don't you want to show? You should show, you know, oh. And some people don't want that. And that's okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But then they start to feel bad because they're like, well, I don't want to show for whatever reason. Um, and yeah, so it's it's kind of being being like you had said, a little more accepting and and knowing that um, and being happy with where you're at and being happy for it where other people are at and not expecting you to necessarily be in the same place. And that's Stephanie's dogs over there. <laughs> I'm sorry. What kind of dogs do you have, Stephanie? There are two of them. They are German short hair pointers. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, and they're they ener highly very energetic. High energy. <laughs> yeah. And it's raining, so I can't put them outside. <laughs> it's been raining nonstop here in Florida. <laughs> and they're and they're like children when when mom's like on the phone or on the zoom or whatever they're all about oh we have to play we have to play so they're yeah i'm really sorry i had some <laughs> of this when i started horse radio network uh and i'm his carriage driver but i've always been a pleasure carriage driver i've never wanted to compete and then i got you know started doing the driving radio show and talking to all these people compete and they're always trying to convince me to compete and i correlated it a little bit to when jennifer and i got married and everybody was bugging us about having kids you know, it was that same thing for, for years, right? And it was this same thing for years, too. You're going to compete. You're going to compete. And finally, I think people just gave up. And I, they give up about the kids thing, too, eventually. Um, although mothers and, you know, grandmothers seem to last a little longer on that topic. But... It was the same thing, and I just never had a desire. I like driving my pony for pleasure, and I know that... Well, first of all, I'd never remember the course in the driving competition. It would never happen. I'd need, I would definitely need a navigator. But I just didn't want the pressure. I just, you know, I have enough pressure. I didn't want the pressure there. I just want to enjoy my pony. And so you're right. Some people d just don't get that you, could, you just want to enjoy your pony. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. I was on a recent uh, trip with my friends, and they're like, oh, we want to do only fast rides. We want to do this. We want to do that. We want to do that. And I'm like, that's great. Have fun. I'm going to do this ride today and take a break. And, and they're like, you need to challenge yourself. I'm like why? That, you know? <laughs> and, and so that it really got me thinking. Like, Life okay, isn't challenging enough. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't have enough things on my plate. Yeah. Right. And you know, I think I'm like, okay, well I have a, I'm, you know, rehabbing a thoroughbred and I have a pony with neurological issues. Yeah. I have enough challenges. Okay. Like I just want to have a nice vacation. And so it was really funny because they're like, well, you're not going to grow. And I'm like, I'm doing plenty. And so it got me thinking all about that because you do see that with kids or why aren't you married? Why are you single? And it was, it was really eye opening for me. Um, so yeah, so I thought it was important to just talk about and get out on the table. Why do we always have to grow with everything we do? <laughs> Can't we just enjoy it and not have to grow? Yeah. Let's just ride the waves and just... Yeah. I think out. occasionally you just need to enjoy where you're at, right? And, you know, I think actually last year when I got sick and had that rough time, that made me realize more than ever that thus the road trip this year and all, all the things we've been wanting to do, but because we were so driven, we never did. That's true. We can kind of get lost in the weeds, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where, um, you know, those people are riding fast and enjoying the wind through their hair and doing all that things, but they're missing, this, you know, the, the view they're missing all these wonderful things um and it really is just it is you gotta you gotta go at your own pace you gotta do what you do what you love and you have to really ask yourself like well what do i want katie do you think that also is age related that the younger the younger you are you're more you're driven and then the older you get the less you're driven do you, you see that with people that you're coaching you know i think What's interesting about the people I've been coaching is that they have put so much aside um, to build the career, build the family, do what they think everybody's expectation was. And now they're, they're burnt out and they're frustrated and they've realized what, what they've missed out on or what they want to make their priority. Um, so it is interesting. I think as we get a little bit further into life, we sort of kind of take that step back and go, yeah, it matters what other people think, but it doesn't really matter if I'm not happy. Um, and so it's been really interesting to see with clients how um, they're kind of working through bringing more, I don't like the word balance because nothing is ever in balance, but how to bring a little bit more space into their, into their daily routine to enjoy all the things that they want to get out of every day. And if you're watching this uh, comment, I'd love to hear what you think about, about this topic in particular. Well, I think it's...
move on. So thank you for bringing that one, Heather. I think it you you brought it with three people who could really relate to that tonight. <laughs> so, My timing was perfect. Yeah, it was perfect, exactly. Well, before we go on, I have to talk about our sponsor tonight, and our sponsor tonight is Purina. So if your horses can't get out on green grass for the daily dose of omegas, Purina's got you covered. The Purina team of PhD equine nutritionists have two new products that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and taste better than many other sources, and that includes fish oil, which just tastes awful. Uh, try the new Purina Omega Match Timothy-based ration balancer or ahi oil supplement and see how for yourself why these are among some of the best omegas that nature offers. It takes science and love together, each pulling their weight to help your horses live their best lives. Put our research to the test at purinamills.com slash omega match. And actually, my pony Scooter, my little hackney pony, is on a dry lot because he gets too fat and wants to blow up like a tick. Uh, so we actually have him on one of these new products because he doesn't get a lot of, he doesn't get any green grass. He's just not even allowed. When I put him out like that, Jennifer gets mad at me. So I can only hand graze him 15 minutes a day and that's the only grass he gets and he looks so sad all the time. But I'm hoping that the Purina helps him out here uh, and gives him the omegas he needs because he's not getting it from green grass. Katie, your topic, getting back to the basics. Talk about that. Yeah, so um, I was really fortunate to grow up in a rural community where my dad shared a love of horses. So we just had him at the family farm. And, you know, I remember studying for like social studies tests on a trail ride. We'd pack my textbook up and we'd go out and my dad would quiz me all the way around. Um, and it was just moments to enjoy being outside, being with the horses, being with our family. And as time goes on and we go to college, I went to college and took corporate careers, career positions, and started building a freelance business, the time at the barn became very regimented. It's got to fit into the schedule. This time, we've got to accomplish this. Um, I have this goal for competition. And it's sort of um, what I realized this summer more than any is that it sort of sucked the fun a little bit out of the, the my most favorite place to be in the barn, right? Um, so it has sort of led me to this crossroads of trying to find a way to get back to the barn, um, knowing that I am not, you know, skilled or interested in becoming a prof professional trainer, but by bringing um, horses into some of the coaching work, it's bringing some of that satisfaction back of just being in the presence of the horses that we love so much. Just the smell, you know, we always, I always talk about how I wish there was that bottled smell of, um, you know, horse nose. <laughs> That's my favorite smell in the world. Um, and it's been really eye opening, especially when you're surrounded by a competitive club that you participate in because um, it's hard to to get other people to understand just being you know in their presence um, so it's just something I've been thinking a lot about is how do I get more back out to the barn without always having a goal in mind um, that has to be accomplished in the time that I'm there comments oh I struggle with that one every day <laughs> every time I'm there because yeah I went from being a really a, a, a heavy competitor to kind of since I've been in Florida, I haven't for various reasons. I mean, and so I really struggled with like, what is my purpose with my horses now? If I'm not actively like doing lessons and competing and stuff like that, I'm like, what, what, what is my goal? Because I am personally kind of a goal driven person. So I, you know, but it, so I really struggled back and forth with that. And then I would feel bad if I would just like go to the barn and only ride for like 20 minutes or something. And um, because I kept asking myself, what am I accomplishing? But what I, even that, or even if I just went and hand grazed or did, you know, groomed or whatever, I would always, always leave the barn feeling better than when I got there. So that's what I was accomplishing. If nothing else, you know, and not that that was necessarily a goal in my mind, but there were there there are still times when I, especially now that it's getting hot in Florida, um, drag myself there because I do board. I don't have my horses on my own property anymore, so I do board. Um, and sometimes it's hard to leave leave that nice air conditioned house when you know it's 105 outside. Um, but I still, no matter what I do, I feel better when I when I do it. But I struggle with that. I still struggle with that a lot. Um, just kind of like, and and now with my position at dressage today, I'm sort of 
getting back into like being around a lot of people who compete and, you know, who teach and train in the upper echelon and all these very motivated people. And it's kind of rekindling things for me. And I'm like, well, maybe I should get back into that and stuff. So, but it's still kind of, but like you said, it's, it's walking that line or trying to find out what works best for you. And, and it, and it varies. It varies sometimes by the day, the week, the month, the year. And, um, but just kind of knowing where that is and, and, accepting where that is too that's a big part of it part of it too is is the go ahead kitty i was gonna say heather and i have the opposite problem stephanie we have to drag ourselves to the barn when it's (laughs) below zero and oh hey i remember i used to do that too so i remember yes but now now that it's summer winter we're in florida's in our winter now this is our winter yeah yeah this is our winter but no i remember and i had horses on my own property then so i remember what it was like having to drag yourself out with the coveralls and the hats and they didn't know it's part of the reason why i live here now and i think probably (laughs) glenn too smart yeah exactly (laughs) heather well, I really, if anyone has a secret to like work life horse balance, I mean, I would pay top dollar for that because I struggle with that every day. I've got two businesses, three kids, you know, two horses, a husband, dogs, and I just no time. So I just um, noticed where the husband came in that list. He was like yeah. 12th down the list. I noticed. Down I just, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's working in the basement. That's where he belongs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's one of those things where, Um, when I was just returning to riding and I was taking lessons, you know, the focus was so much on riding and that I really wanted to spend more time learning horsemanship and learning groundwork and doing that and not having the opportunity. And, uh, now it's kind of flipped where I have that opportunity to do that case in point. So I have to plan the time. Otherwise I book clients and I don't get to go, but I booked some time. I went today and I had this beautiful pole work exercise set up in the arena and I'd taken some time to do it. And then I went to go get my horse and he ran away from me. And (laughs) I spent a good 20 minutes trying to convince him that yes, we should put the halter on. And he's just like, no, no, I will only come to you if you scratch me and give me love. And I just don't want to work today. And so I did, I dropped the halter. I just threw it over the fence and I just went and sat in the paddock with him. And I think, working with horses, you really have to figure out that you can have a plan, but you got to throw it out sometimes. Um, So that's one of those things where I just really enjoy sometimes that time off and maybe don't ride as much as I should. Um, But what's should, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. you got to do what's good for you any given day. One of my favorite things to do with my pony is just go for a walk around the neighborhood because we live in an equestrian neighborhood. I just, you know, take him a walk for a walk like a dog. Um, and it's so funny when, because he's so small, he's like 12, 12, three and a little hackney and Jennifer's horse. If we go out for walks together, she has this 16 and a half hand thoroughbred and they look like, you know, Mutt and Jeff. It's like, <laughs> and everybody thinks he's a baby. So then I'm walking the baby because he's so much smaller than than Nigel is. But he loves just going out for walks like that. You know, one, he doesn't have to pull the cart, so it's much easier for him. Uh, but he just loves for going on adventures like that. So sometimes we just load up the horses and we go. We have so many trails around here, but we go and hand walk them on the trails. And they love that because for them, it's no stress either, right? They don't have to work that hard and it's just fun time. So we've gotten in the habit now of just taking them out for walks. And they, they love it and it's less stress for us. It's so much easier than loading a cart and a harness and the tack and all that. You just go. And, you know, I've stopped feeling guilty about that a long time ago now. Because you do. You feel guilty for a long time because it's, you feel guilty because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is riding and, or in my case, driving, right? Uh, but at the yeah. end of the day, I mean, they want to play with you too, right? It shouldn't all be work because then they're, they're going to get sour. They're not going to want to spend the time with you. And I don't know, at the end of the day, isn't it? about the relationship with horses that that's why we're there. And they have moods. I mean, there's some days they want to work and some days they don't. I mean, they have their own moods. As my horse indicated today. <laughs> yeah. He told you. No <laughs> under terms. no circumstances will I come with you. So I think what we're saying is you don't have to feel guilty for this. If you get time with your horse, no matter what that time is, right, Katie, isn't that what we're saying? You just don't put the guilt aside. Exactly. You know, your, your story about hand walking um, reminded me of last fall, our 
there fell and got a hematoma on her hindquarters and required a lot of hand walking. And we had some of the most fun times, just 15 minutes out into the woods and back every day. Um, and instead of running away from me in the pasture, she'd actually come, you know? Um, so, and then of course she got spoiled because we had to massage it to get the swelling and, and whatnot out. So she thinks that life now should be hand walks and, and hind quarter massages all the time. <laughs> um, but it was really a lot of fun just to, you know, go and take care of her and not worry about there being something that had to be worked towards. And because she was injured, you didn't feel guilty. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. But isn't yeah. it weird that we feel guilty? I mean, why do we feel guilty? Where in it? Where in our like, learning curve or whatever did it say you should feel guilty if you're not doing X, Y, and Z? So why is it that we feel guilty? Not that well, I expect you guys to have the answer, but maybe you I do. I have an answer. I come okay. from some trainers. <laughs> you know, so I've definitely been at the barn where a trainer has said in passing, "Oh, so and so hasn't been out to ride their horse lately," and you know, the blah 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 blah. And I think. You know, so you hear that and you know, even though you're the one there, you're like, oh, my God, they're going to be talking badly about me if I don't do it. But uh, a friend just told me there's horse riders and horse owners. Right. And sometimes a lot of the horse owners don't have the time to ride, especially if you have multiple horses. And maybe sometimes that's that's a better excuse because they just do what they want to do. Mm. What else I think is interesting is um, I've been studying a lot lately. Um different strength finders that we each have. There's an assessment called the strength finders assessment. And there are 34 different behaviors that are inherent in all people. And they're categorized into four groups. And I happen to be a, an achiever, a focused person, <laughs> an input person, and futuristic, which means I'll have all of these goal oriented traits, you know, in me, whether who knows where that came from, genetics, upbringing, whatever. Um, and it's sometimes it's so hard to fight like our internal, um, just who we are, you know, and so since I've been reading a, a lot about those in just kind of the corporate setting, I've been trying to bring that to the barn with me and say, okay, this is my achiever trait coming out right now, maybe I need to take a step back and just go with the flow. Um, we're still a work in progress by all means, but it's been really interesting to kind of make that connection of how, how I show up in life and work is also sort of what's happening in the arena and finding ways to reconcile those. Is one of those 30 lazy ass old guy? Cause I think I qualify for that one. I think I'm right I in there. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to go on to our final question of the night. But before I do that, I want to chat with all of you guys a little bit about what you do and find out a little bit more. So let's start with Stephanie. She is over there with Dressage Today. So what's your role over there? What's your official title? My official title is Multimedia Content Director. Um, so that means a little bit of everything. Um, I do, you know, because Dressage Today no longer publishes as a hard copy publication, a magazine. Um, it kind of got merged in with Practical Horsemen. So I do act as partially as a, I do do some editing and writing work for the print issue, issue of Practical Horsemen. But I also, like we talked about earlier, do a podcast. Um, we have a video subscription site that I do a lot of work with um, filming videos and, and doing descriptions and, and all that, which is where I get to meet lots of really, really, really great people. And social media, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes here and the website. So just all just all sorts of different things. Very good. And Katie, so uh, people can find you the best place to go is your website, I assume. Yes, it is. And, you know, if somebody wanted to talk to you about the things you've been talking about tonight, that's where they would contact you? Um, yes. If they go to uh, katienavara.com, there's a contact page um, right there at the, at the bottom of every page on the website. Um, also on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and welcome any opportunity to, to just kind of chat horses and hear where, you're, where all of you're at and, and what you're hoping to work towards in the next step. Very good. And then we have the timid rider who, it's so funny because when, when I first learned that you were the timid rider person, I went, Heather's the timid rider. I get that a lot. <laughs> well, your personality is not timid, let's be honest. <laughs> so, it's, like, it's, it's the exact opposite of that. So uh, obviously your website too, right? 
Yes, timidwriter.com and then I'm across social media at timidwriter as well. And uh, for those that are followers of Horses in the Morning, Heather got to go out and spend the weekend with Jamie out there at Flag is Up Farm. So what was your impression of the movement that you went to out there? I was really interested. This was my first ever horsemanship clinic. And um, like I, I maybe mentioned before, I am kind of started this journey to become a better um, person for my horses and to better communicate with them. So um, I found it, first of all, you can't go wrong with a true legend who's been working with horses for 80 years. So that was really interesting. Um, but God, he's it was 86. And from what Jamie said, he just didn't quit all weekend. Oh my God. He didn't stop. He got on and started reining a horse. He hadn't ridden in months. And before that he hadn't ridden the horse in three years. And I mean, it just, I, I, I hope to God that I'm as physically capable as him and mentally capable at 86 years old, because I, I'm not going to lie. I have some trouble dismounting sometimes after a long day in the saddle. <laughs> so to watch him go was really impressive. Um, but he just had so much uh, information. We're talking about Monty Roberts for those yes. that don't know the flag is up for Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Monty Roberts. And um, it was lovely to meet Jamie and, um, and all the other trailblazers there. And uh, it was the, the, the tagline this year was transformations, transitions, and trailblazers. So we were watched thoroughbreds and wild Mustangs kind of going through the transformational process. And it was, it was really interesting to see a day one versus day three. Uh, I learned a lot. Yay. Well, good. I'm glad you did. Yep. And if you want to learn more about that, Jamie talked about it on Horses in the Morning this morning. She spent about a half an hour talking about her weekend and uh, what she got out of it. So because you know when you're when you're the instructor, no matter what it is, Katie will Katie will know this. Uh, when you're in the instructor, you always learn more than the students. And in, in almost every session you ever do, every session I've ever done at podcasting, I learn more because you're prepping for it and you're getting ready for it, and and then you learn from from the people when they come up and talk to you after. It's just it's more educational for the instructor than than the people in the audience. No, All right, no. let's talk about social media, Stephanie. Let's talk about the evil social media. <laughs> So this is the polar opposite of the, in some respects of the, you know, chronic positivity that we talked about <laughs> earlier. So we had on the one end of, end of the spectrum, we had the everything has to be great. Then on the other end of the spectrum, we have some social media, media that can tend to get on the negative side. And of course, Katie balanced us out with how to figure out the balance. So, you know, all three of these <laughs> subjects have kind of blended together. We're but, ending on the negative tonight. We're gonna- <laughs> yeah, no, why did we do that? I don't know. But, but it's not all negative, And I do want to make that point. But at, at, at any rate, as far as social media, and again, this spans more than just the horse industry, as, as we know. But, um, you know, I've seen... The great thing about social media, especially with horses, is, and I think we've all seen it, is in an emergency situation, like if they're down here, if there's hurricanes or if there are fires in California and stuff, social media is a great way to get information out really fast and people can connect and people can help each other and they come together. And that's when the horse industry does come together. And that's fantastic. I think that's, you know, that's great. Um, on the other hand, then you get a lot of people that will say a lot of really bad things about, <laughs> about horses and people and professionals, and I'm kind of amazed by it. And I get it. I'm a, I'm a sensitive person. I'm a little too sensitive. I get that. And I know the whole scroll on by, just don't pay attention to it. But when you see a lot of it, it's hard to just like, you know, to just kind of shut it out. And it's hard to not let it sort of start to permeate things. So, you know, but I'm just amazed sometimes how people, I don't know if they don't think like, this is a person, this is a horse that somebody loves. This is someone who has built a career and people are just mean (laughs) and they're angry. And I, you know, personally don't get it. But anyway, so you know, it's it's kind of like trying to not let that, you know, kind of eat away at you, I guess, a little bit. We had a uh, when I owned the acting company for ten years, we had an eighty twenty rule, 
the 80-20 rule was 80% of the audience will love what you did and 20% will hate it. And they sat right beside each other, they ate the same food, and they saw the same show. You know, there was no difference in the 400 people that were out there. Uh, and it just, it was always that way. It was always the 80-20. So we always had this thing, and I think that's where I got a tougher skin from. You play to the 80, because you know the 20 isn't going to like it. So you don't change what you're doing for the 20%. You play to the 80%. And so when we started Horse Radio Network, it was that way. I knew that we were going to have people that didn't like us, and that's fine. They're the 20%. We don't play to them. We play to the 80%. And that's a hard lesson to learn, though, for a while, especially when the attacks are personal. You know, if they're attacking generally, you know, a topic or a subject, then you don't agree with it. That's one thing, right? But when they come after you personally, then that's a whole different thing. But... Yet, they're the 20%. And it's so funny because those same people listen every day. Isn't That's that what funny? I don't get. I'm like, if you hate it so much, why do you stay? They <laughs> love the drama. I, well, yeah, I know. I get it. Yeah. Or they have to have something to hate. I don't know. Katie, you deal with yeah. personal personality and, and stuff like that. Where, where do you fall on this one? Well, so I am your upper end of the millennial generation. Um, so I have a love hate relationship with social media because, you know, it wasn't around when I was born, but it's become, you know, but I'm a little bit more than the generation older than me. Um, and it's, yeah, some days I just wish I could delete all my accounts and not be on it. And part of it is even the, the, you know, the FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. You see all these people that you compete with going back to that conversation you see in their feeds and their feeds. Um, but then, you know, the, the beauty of social media is I have made a lot, I've made a great living on finding stories of the people I'm connected with. Um, and not only have I made a great living, but I have been able to highlight and spotlight people's accomplishments that mean so much to them. And so it becomes like this affirmation of the work that they have done or the accomplishment that they've had in life. And that's really, that's a really powerful and cool um, feeling to be able to, to share somebody else's success with the world. And some of those people I would never, you know, keep up with or run across if it weren't for social media. So, you know, it's that love, hate, I wish I could cut the cord, but I, I won't. <laughs> well, we all wouldn't be friends and we're well, that, sitting right, here tonight, right? right Without very it. true. Yeah. 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 I mean, we would have met maybe, but you know, uh, you know, at a conference or something, but it's, it is, Right. Yeah, but it is so much easier to, like, I probably would have never called Heather, you know, it was easy because I knew we we're Facebook friends and I just right. drop her a message, you know, it's easier. Yeah. So it is more complicated. Can, God, we were selling tickets to shows where people had to send in checks. There was no internet. I mean, I, I don't know how we even did things back then. It's just crazy when you think about it. So there is a lot of positives, but it's yeah. tough to have that skin. And the other thing, too, that I think that's kind of a, kind of a negative with social media is people tend to only post the good things. So yes, that's that toxic positivity coming back at you. Right. Yeah, see, we, we've come full circle. Look at that. <laughs> Journalists putting it all together. <laughs> and I think that's why when you see people who post, hey, I just, found, I just got the words, you have cancer, right? Um, and when you see po people post the very vulnerable things, they actually get more reaction and more positivity, ironically, um, than a post that's positive, right? So because you are you don't always see those on social media, especially Facebook, you don't see the vulnerable things all the time. And I think, actually, I'm seeing it more. I think people are being more honest than they were two years ago. Well, I can definitely speak to this because my blog is really personal. And I think you have the perfect point, Glenn, because... I do tend to focus a lot on the positive and how I've grown, but I do post occasionally like a troubled ride or a, a problem I've having or things like that. And those posts go so viral. I get so many comments and so much support, which is really, really lovely because it's not a cry for help. I'm not looking for attention. I just want to share the other side of it. Like I just want to kind of make that a conversation, be really authentic. And I think that really jives with people. I think that really hits a spot because not everybody does that. I think relatable is the word, right? You're relatable because I everybody so. can relate to it, Absolutely. right? I mean, we all have those issues and we can all, I think that's why Horses in the Morning has done so well over the years is because we're just relatable, right? We're, we have, we're, she's that girl, I'm that guy, you know, we make all the mistakes, we all do all the stupid stuff and we're just relatable. And I think that's, I think that's kind of what people are looking for. It's, 
it's it's interesting too with the guests we've had on over the years and we've had over six thousand now on horses in the morning so but our most popular days are not when we have olympians it's when we have average people that people can relate to right they have a story to tell but it you know nobody you can't relate to an olympian you can't even f fathom what their life is like riding 10 horses in a day nobody can relate to that so i think we relate to people that are more like us i might be wrong about that but that's what we found over the years no i i could i would absolutely agree with you i when i look and sometimes i do like speaking engagements or things like that and i'll have 2000 followers versus 24 or 40000 that all these other people have and that's because um, I don't know why, but it doesn't matter to me because what matters is like, I'm helping somebody by talking about my own personal journey and the private messages I get are what keep me going. I've been lucky enough to meet people in person that have been touched by my stories and on days where I'm just like, you know what? I don't know if it's worth it, me sharing this anymore. Those are the things that keep me going. And so there's a cyclical effect too of that. Um, cause I've been lucky enough to not get a lot of negativity, although, one time somebody said something about my daughter's writing and I just flipped out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's mama bear coming out there. You can say there. something about me all you want, but she's not paying to be on social media. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine how much politicians must feel when they go after their kids. Oh, that must be awful. Terrible. <laughs> what, you, what you said was interesting, Glenn, the 80, 20 thing. I'm playing to the 80% and not to the 20 because part of, and I'll bring in Katie's topic. Part of my personality is I've always been a bit of a people pleaser. I, I want, everybody to be happy and you know so i'm less of a people pleaser than i used to be i think age has something to do with that you just give up after a while yes, you're, like, you're tired oh, you do <laughs> and i get it i get it i you know like fundamentally i understand you can't please everybody but there's still a piece of me that's like i want you to like it why won't you like it okay but, well but put them in that tw now that you've right. heard that Right. There's a box that the 20% belong in. Just put them in the box. That's what I was going to say. That's why what you said really kind of resonated with me. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I guess I didn't really think of it. I've got, you know, that to play more to the 80% and less to the, to the 20%. The problem when you play, little, yeah, the problem tricky. when you play to the 20% is you lose the 80% because you're you spending yeah. all your time over here with this box that never is going to change or care about you. No, exactly. Exactly. And over so here's that, the 80% that are loving you and you're ignoring them. Yeah. Right. So, no, so you're absolutely right. So yeah. I'm, I've learned something today. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Well, somebody, somebody told me about, because I had said, you know, oh, when people unsubscribe from my email newsletter, you know, kind of gives a ping through my heart or, you know, writes a review and, you know, I don't necessarily agree about it. Um, you know, and my, my friend said to me, but you don't want those people receiving your email anyway. Those are not the people for you. And I think it's a really hard pill to swallow because I myself used to be a people pleaser and I'm really trying not to be anymore, right, but it's hard right. to just shut that down. It is. <laughs> mm. Okay. But now you have the box. Now, yeah, now I have now, the box. I'm going to make a 20% box. I'm going to say Glenn's 20% box. You should. You there. should. And you have to, because, because by focusing on that, you're losing focus on the, the 80% right. that really do want to hear what really are affected by what you say, yeah. you know, and it's going back to what Heather said, you know, when we started horses in the morning, especially all the shows, but when we started started horses in the morning, Jamie and I talked about the fact that our job that day was not to please the 10,000 people that were listening. We wanted to affect one person's life that day, make them laugh when they're having a crappy day, make, make it, maybe they learn something that saves their horse. One person today, let's go help one person today. So we focus on the one person, not the 10,000 people yeah. we know are listening, no, right? That's a really good way well, to Well, you must be it. doing something right because, well, you know, 10 years later. Yeah, right. and, yeah but, but it's by focusing on the one. And you don't know who that one is or what that is that day, right? Everybody's day is different. And I think you lose sight, too, if you focus on the 10,000. You know, then you're kind of, you're all over the place. Whereas if we're just focusing on the one, we, we're, our job is to help one person today. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? If we help one person five days a week, that's pretty good. That's yeah. damn good. Yeah. And that brings that relatability in, too, because you're really focusing on one and you can be super honest, authentic, and they feel like they're heard and, you know, that you're talking to them. We totally hijacked Katie's topic here. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was Stephanie's topic. No, it, it was my topic. Oh, it was your topic. That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say is, you know, I think it's interesting um, 
that, you know, we have all these metrics on social media, like likes and comments and all of that, but we don't really truly know how we affect somebody until they take the time to send that note. And it is when it comes at the most unexpected time um, or from somebody that you really just had no idea had been touched at that particular moment. And I think that that's, you know, also super powerful to remember when there's so many negative things that go along with social media sometimes. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, this is just something as silly as last week, I saw a youth essay contest for young horse lovers. And so I shared it on my LinkedIn and somebody that I went to high school with, who's a superintendent at a school, reached out and asked for the link and said, by the way, I love reading your, all of your articles. And I was like, geez, you know, I haven't really talked, I haven't talked to you in 20 years. And, you know, it was really sweet of you to, I had no idea you read my stuff, you know? So I think that those uh, moments are also helpful to to balance out the the twenty percent negativity. Are you guys surprised sometimes at the things that do affect people? Like sometimes we'll do a show and we'll think it's not very good. You know, we do this a lot and every day. So, you know, some are better than others in our opinion. But we'll get more con- on the day we think, oh, that, well, that we just kind of suck today. And that's the one we get the most response on that people loved it. We're, yeah. we're never right about the things we think. Or we have a guest on that we thought, oh, that, they were okay. Yeah. But yet we'll get 10 comments on that one guest because people related to that guest yet we we didn't think it was anything really super special, right? It's I'm always surprised at the things that do affect people. Or the opposite. You think, oh, man, this is going to be really good. Yeah, and then people exactly. are like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, nobody so, cares. yeah, no, <laughs> I, I admittedly am not good at predicting stuff at all. So, you know, <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> well, Heather, you probably get that. You write this piece and you're going, this is the one that's really going to get a lot of reaction. It's like, nope, nope, nope. You know, and it's funny because I... Actually, I wrote the toxic positivity piece and I was just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know about sharing this and maybe, maybe, maybe I just don't. And then it got picked up by Venting Nation and it started going viral. And I was like, wow, I must have really hit a nerve. Just it was a little surprising to me. So I was like, oh, this is great. But then I have something that I really work really hard on. I'm like, this is going to be so important and educational and, you know, crickets. So yep. <laughs> you yep. just never know what's going to what's going to hit. Yeah, for some reason that Lamanitis article just didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it, it's very exciting, Lamanitis. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, this no, has been. I, this has I been good. Just saying, like, just be true to yourself, and you know, keep doing what you're doing, and then you know, just see what happens. So there we go. Play to the eighty percent, not to twenty percent, and that goes for life. Yep. That goes for your Facebook friends, quote unquote, right? Um, don't play to the twenty percent that piss you off every day they post. Just unfollow them, you know? <laughs> and you know, play to the eighty percent. That's that's my. I'm going to leave everybody with that today. Okay, Thank you, Stephanie. You remind me. All right, good. <laughs> well, again, where can everybody find you, Stephanie? Real quick. Um, I the website's dressagetoday.com or social media. We're we're all over social media at Dressage Today. Can't miss it, Heather. Uh, timidrider.com or at timidrider across social media. And Katie. You can find me at katienavara.com. Very good. And of course, if you missed any part of today's show and you want to hear the rest of it, you can watch it on the video here on any of the pages we put it on, or you can catch the audio version at stablescoop.com, or you can find it on any podcast player. Just search for Stable Scoop. It's actually our longest show. This has been going since 2008. Uh, and we have a bunch of other shows on the Horse Radio Network now, over 20 of them. You can go to horseradionetwork.com, just look at the homepage, and you'll find them all there. And if you want to see where we can meet up on the big road show, we're, we're going to get started here at the end of July. We have all the meetups posted now. Go to horseradionetwork.com and just click on the banner for the road show, and you'll see all the meetups. We don't have all the details about all of them, but at least have the time and places so you can reserve the date. And that's it for today. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. And thank you to Chris at the American Horse Publications. I just want to thank her because she's the one that puts us all together. We're yeah. friends because of that we group, are. really. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we for the conference. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. If there's anyone um, listening today that's interested or involved in any way in equine media, we'd love to have you at our annual seminar. It's the American Horse Publication Seminar. It will be in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas this year at the Westin Hotel there. September 16th through 18th. I heard steak. That's all I heard was steak. <laughs> I heard Texas. I just want to travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I know. 
<laughs> I, but it is a great conference. It really is. Yeah, it but is. I heard some of the speakers are really crappy this year. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, especially Heather Wallace and Glenn. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we got to play to the eighty percent, man. Yeah. Just play to the eighty percent. <laughs> and on Don't that note, <laughs> AmericanHorsePublications.org. dot yeah. org. Dot org. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Katie. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.